So the first thing you notice is that the screens are much clearer. There's a lot of, lot of clarity, much, much easier to, to, to read. Typically, I like to have a lot of information set up. So I've got uh, on the left side, my traffic display, my flight plan, <clears throat> my moving map and information. And over here, I've got a terrain display. I've got wind data displayed two different ways. Actually, the, uh, the, the, the raw wind data and then broken down into a headwind and crosswind component on the left. Really, really easy to configure the screens. There is an option to put uh, information in the center of your compass rows. And what I found with that is it's a little more difficult to use than what it's actually worth, so I don't use that particular function. But uh, you can notice how much easier it is to read everything on the MFD, also on the PFD. All the altitudes, frequencies, it tells you which frequency you're listening to. Everything really, really clear, much, much easier to read. There's a lot that's been made about the, the clarity of the screens, the pixels, and also the refresh rate, how quick it is. I don't really notice that much in quickness. Uh, it's really quick, but the, the 1,000, well, it took a while, but it wasn't that bad. It's a lot faster now. Uh, what, what is really interesting is what you can do with the ADSB, <clears throat> the FISB and the TISB data. <clears throat> As we look here, I'm just going to go to the uh, uh, traffic map. So very, very easy to see. I've highlighted this guy. It's November 280 Mike Foxtrot and uh, there's his course and his ground speed uh, and his, his track. We've got ADSB. There's also somebody on the surface of the airport, this dot, make this go away. So another thing is that uh, it has a Garmin trend line. It's not showing since we're not moving, but it would be a green line that shows movement relative to your airplane. So even if there was someone in front of you, parallel heading, if you were overtaking him, the green line would show his movement as backwards because that's his relative motion to you. This is really an incredible display, and as you can see, it is really, really legible. I'll scroll out, and we get more traffic at the, at the inside of 12 miles. So, taking off from a crowded, uncontrolled airport, this screen is really good, and I replicate it <clears throat> on my PFD <clears throat> as well. The uh, flight plan page, <clears throat> You'll notice a, a little difference here. I'm just going to enter a real quick flight plan from uh, Pickens to Pickens to Donaldson, and it asks for a runway. That's the safe taxi feature. So we'll scroll the runway, and we'll runway five here at Pickens, and you can also. That was runway five at uh, at Donaldson. So for runway at Pickens, we're going to choose runway five as well. And if we scroll in, we'll see the safe taxi, which is how I taxi the airplane. Oh, there you can see an aircraft just taxiing by. So you even get uh, traffic, and he's pull, pulling into the self-service fuel pump. So you can see the traffic on the ground. You see that the, your departure runway has little arrows highlighting which way you'll be going, and the runway itself is highlighted. Safe taxi is a really, really good feature with the NXI. Additionally, other than traffic, the uh, GWX-75 radar is outstanding. So we'll go to the mode here, and we're in standby right now. We'll just go to weather with nobody around the airplane. Tilt it up, we're at 80 miles. <clears throat> Scroll in a bit. 
and you can see that this, the display is very, very much better than the old GWX68 that came as original equipment, and I seriously don't understand why anyone would put a GWX68 in an airplane like this. So back to standby mode on the radar, and looking at the data link weather, this is really incredible. This is where I used to have a portable GPS on my, on my leg during flight. Now what I've got is an incredible amount of information. Right now I'm looking at echo tops, <clears throat> lightning information. I think if I scroll out a little bit, we did have a couple lightning hits previously. <clears throat> but you can get, uh, oh, here we got one hit down here nothing else so there's no uh, convective t activity around i'm getting uh, i can get cell movement Let's see where there are cells moving uh sigmets airmets here are the metar displays uh legend you can call up there's icing turbulence echo tops obviously winds uh, more weather information over here is freezing level uh, winds right now we've got flight level 390 but if we hit that we could go to uh, 390 420 390 uh, we can go to the previous screen and get winds from 18,000 to 33 I don't know and surface the whole way up so you've got wind information, so if you're trying to figure out if you're better off to climb or descend to get better, better winds, that information is right there for you. Freezing level, the yellow line, just an incredible amount of information for, uh, for weather. Waypoint information, you can see that they'll decode the METAR, <clears throat> and it's so much easier to view than it was in the G1000. If we uh, go to the flight plan and uh, select an approach, there's another option that you'll see, and that is the visual approach, which basically gives you a straight in final with a glide path to a runway. So if you're flying a visual approach as opposed to a, an LPV or precision approach or any kind of approach, you're gonna get a, a glide slope <clears throat> based on, I think, a three mile final, or you can select uh, vectors for a straight in and it shoots the final out even longer. So an in, in incredible capability there. Uh, the uh, status pages are much clearer, easier to read. Again, owing to the, all the, the pixelation that, that they've got. VNAV is also a bit easier to work if we go back to the flight plan. Uh, we don't have any constraints in here. Let's see if we load a procedure, select an approach. We'll do the uh, RNAV GPS runway 5 at Donaldson and we'll just do Pagey as an IAF and no minimums. We'll load that. And we see we've got VNAV constraints along the way. So if we want to edit that, we'll just make Pagey 3,000 feet. And now a little pencil shows up to the right to let us know that we've edited that input. So uh, I don't know if you can see, but on four flight on my phone, I have a fairly complex flight plan loaded and what I want to do is send that instead of taking the time to type everything in to the, uh, the NXI. I've already got it on flight plan on my iPad or my iPhone. I push that button, I hit send to panel, and I got one flight plan pending and, and press enter to preview and there's the flight plan with all of its waypoints and I will activate that, confirm it, and if I go to my flight plan page, now I have the entire route 
from Pickens to Boston, including the arrival, all with one button push. So a lot of waypoints, a lot of time uh, typing in, but with the Flightstream 510, it's just a button push away. Now let's say that they uh, give me a revised routing and I'll just uh, take a bunch of stuff out of here. And there's my revised routing, so I just send that to the panel and enter the preview. It looks good. I activate it, confirm, and now my reroute is entered into the flight plan. So the single pilot operation, anything you can do to, to, to minimize your head's down time is of, of real value to you. The Flightstream 510 is excellent for that. Additionally, when it's time to update your databases, you do it from your iPad. You just bring the iPad in, it uh, establishes a connection, and it transfers the data as opposed to you having to put the data on an SD card, bring the SD card out, and go through that uh, the whole nosebleed that we used to have to do with the, the regular G1000.